Thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. What is up, my exchange family from all over the world? And thank you for tuning in to another episode of Chief Chat. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Kevin Osby, and I'm your Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Army and Air Force Exchange Service. Before we get started with our guest today, I would like to introduce my lovely co-hosts, Kiana Holloman and Emily Zarsk. How y'all doing, ladies? Good, how are you? Oh, I'm doing wonderful. I, listen, I'm hungry, and I think we got the right kind of guest coming on. <laughs> I think so, too. I'm excited. Absolutely. Absolute. So without further ado, Kiana, please introduce today's guest. So today's guest is a renowned as one of the top chefs in the United States, and he also served as White House chef under four presidents. He's a retired Army Master Sergeant and has a new book coming out, or it's out now, and his fitness routine will literally blow your mind, like, wait till you see him. <laughs> so please give a warm <laughs> welcome to Chef Andre Rash. Hey. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, lovely ladies and gentlemen? Gentleman, <laughs> we are we are doing great, great. And from this, from what you got on your shirt, I'm gonna make sure that I call you chef. Okay, <laughs> chef is <Damn> mandatory. It's <laughs> mandatory. So it's it's great to it's great to meet you, and uh, it's a pleasure to have you with us today. Can you let uh, our viewers know where you're joining us from today? Um, right now, I'm actually in a part of LA. I, I'm usually on a plane about 20, 25 days out of the month doing so many different things. So I'm back in LA near where I live. I live in LA and DC. So I go back and forth. Now that's exciting. I love the West Coast for sure. Um, so Chef, I went to the Jackson State University. You're also from Mississippi. You actually grew up in a housing project in Mississippi. So what was your childhood like and how did it shape you into the person you are today? Um, my childhood um, was filled with love, joy, hard work, and diversity. Um, <clears throat> and my, I, I tell everyone, my, my dad was the one, as soon as I could walk, he put me to work and my mother gave him my heart, also my love for food. And everything in between was just hard work, perseverance, and understanding life as a young, you know, a young child coming up from the projects, especially being African-American and understanding because in Mississippi, as you know, it, where I grew up, it was only black and white. I, when I joined the military, there was this big rainbow of colors, right? Which I, I love rainbow of colors and peoples and personalities and languages. You know, I'm, I had that Southern twang, <laughs> which, you know, I, I don't have so much right now, <laughs> but um, it, it, it shaped me, you know, even to this very day, I'm still the hardest worker in the room and I pride myself on that. You know, I, I never become complacent and I tell everybody the first day is every day. As soon as I wake up, it starts over. No matter what success I may have, a thought I have, no matter what kind of failures, and I have a lot of them and I'll still have them. And people think when they get to the top, they're complacent. But when I get to the top of a mountain, it's the bottom of the next. So we just keep going. So and I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I just kind of wanted to throw throw a couple of things in there because uh, I grew up uh, in a housing project as well in, in Shreveport, Louisiana, so which is not too far from Mississippi. And so I can imagine uh, us having kind of similar kind of upbringing and stories uh, in, in a, like you said, it's, it's a black and white type thing until we joined the military. And of course, you got a chance to, to, to realize you don't know a lot about a lot uh, coming from that type of environment to the military environment, because there's so many different, uh, you know, different types of people and personalities and, and, and uh, ethnicities. And just, I just realized how ignorant I was, uh, you know, when I joined the military, because I, I just knew what I knew. And so, uh, but, but I do, I do understand the humility that you kind of possess knowing where you came from and where you've ascended to and understanding that you, you've seen both sides of the coin and uh, you just appreciate every day for what it is. So uh, thank you for kind of bringing that point home. No, thank you for that. That's perfectly said. And Chef, um, what made you decide to join the Army and did you envision that you would be there for 23 years? Um, no, first off, I didn't think I'd be there for 23 years. 
<laughs> you know how they say, you know how they say, Chief, you understand, you know how they say, you know, the, man, that was fast. It went by quick, right? Yeah. Before you know it, it's 23 years of your life that's, um, <clears throat> that you're reflecting on. And what made me join the military was my family was a, we had a family of eight at the time, you know, five sisters and um, two other brothers. And everybody did something. My young sister just retired from uh, the colonel from the Air Force. My other brother, he was an officer in the Navy was a merchant marine. My other sister was a social worker, also the line. So even though they were much older, it was kind of embedded in my uh, mind, you know, in my, my DNA to serve, right? So serve, you know, my dad was a preacher in church. Um, everything we did was about the of God. So I knew that though when I was getting out of scholarship or whatnot, uh, I wanted to do something for me. And the military was the route that I wanted to go. So, so I gotta ask, uh, why the army? Because uh, when I when I got when I first came into the military, uh, I was a marine prior to being an airman, and so you know I was I really really I felt like I didn't have a choice because the marines got me like I was a, a dog on probably about a junior in high school, and they was already knocking at my door trying to influence me to come to the marines. But so yeah, why why'd you choose the army? So the, the marines tricked you; they got you early. They, yeah, <laughs> you got yeah, supported yeah. Went to the Air Force. exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny because I mess around with my sister all the time about the Air Force, but, you know, I was, uh, the CG asked me to come over to Lackland, and I stayed there for like a week, and literally the Air Force blew my, I knew about services, Marines, Coast Guard, Navy, but when I went to the Lackland and stayed a week with those guys and talked to everyone, to include the dogs <laughs> and the women, of course, the spouses, which is the first thing I always do. Um, it blew my mind. I mean, I know the Air Force, but as far as being strategic, logistical, family care, self care, all those things of all educational, to just just blew my mind. But the Marines had me. The Army came. The Army came. The Army came. And I was like, I said, I was a Mississippi. I, it kind of like go. It was a part where it was like by default. I didn't ask my brothers who was already in the military. I wanted to do it on my own because I didn't want anybody to tell me what to do, not knowing that if they had. It probably would have been better, but at the same time, I wouldn't be shipped rush right now. You know, so I look at yeah. things. So I made the best out of my situation. Don't get me wrong, I love the Army. Uh, I, I put it in layman's term. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times, but it was times I would never forget. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So so during your tenure uh, in the Army, you, you worked for many leaders, including the Joint Chief of Staff, uh, the Secretary of the Army, and the Chief of Staff. So. Um, at what point did you discover your passion for cooking and how did the army support that? Um, my passion came from my mom in Mississippi. Uh, my dad had the mentality where you, the boys go to work, the girls uh, go to school, uh, boys don't cook, men don't cook in, you know, it was always the woman, you know, in Louisiana it was the men cook, but now it's a whole different story. Uh, I did it because it was uh, in Mississippi, like in Louisiana, you understand, it was a hospitality, it was a different culture. Food was life, food was loving and caring and all those different things when you sit at a table and congregate with your family, <clears throat> it became a whole different world. So that stuck with me. When I went to the military, it just carried on. And as I went through the military and the army, when I finally got into cooking, I, I just fell in love with culinary. Didn't even know what culinary meant, but I knew I loved it. And so what happened was um, I got to my first Olympics with my first show, became a, a pastry chef, became a master ice carver. And I just I just want to do everything with cooking. And the military supported. I went on terror missions, which were recruiting uh, uh, kids, you know, going into college, you know, join the military, to become a chef or a cook in the military. And from there, I have a Disney show coming right now. I have a show with Gordon Ramsay, that was just with him Friday, you know, doing that. I'm doing a show with Kevin Hart, you know, and my own show about me, I'm doing, all these different things that cooking, just my passion for food has evolved from, so. No, that's so exciting. Like, I wish we were all in studio right now and you could have like, you know, shove something up for us because I am a little bit hungry. But in addition to <laughs> being a chef for um, the Army, you're in the Army, you also became a White House chef. And so you worked for the Clinton Bush Obama and Trump administration. So what was that experience like working for the leaders of the free world? <clears throat> I, mean, 
Excuse me. You you talking about food is making me hungry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you stop that. I just ate. I got to eat again now. So no, <laughs> such an ama amazing experience. Um, the humility from it, just being there, part of history, part of something that anyone and everyone wouldn't have to experience, and just appreciate it. You know, when I first went there, um, I tell people, you know, like, how was it? I mean, honestly, I didn't know how it was when I first went there because my mentality and my mindset at the time as a young kid was someone wants me to fail, right? I've had it my whole entire life when I was young, so my mentality was just go forward and work hard and then work harder and then work harder than everybody else. And then later on, if you can smell the roses, smell the roses. But until then, just keep working. And after years of working, I finally stopped and like, wow, this is pretty cool, <laughs> you know, to be here. I was never, I was always that stiff type of person where in service, and you appreciate it because no matter who it was, I was people, I was a person that taught people to step in and step out, say hi and bye, don't over exaggerate, don't prolong your stay. It's like an unwelcome guest. So I was that yeah. etiquette person. And so, Chef, you have a new book out, just like your shirt says, Call Me Chef, Damn It. Um, and it came out in April. And shameless exchange plug, we're selling it tax-free online at shopmyexchange.com. Um, but what inspired you to write a book, and what can readers expect from it? Oh, wow. Um, so I'll be honest with you. I never expected to write that book. When HarperCollins <laughs> came to me, it was a, I was going to be a, a cookbook. I'm actually doing a cookbook right now. But they were like, well, chef, we want to hear your story. We want to know more about you. We don't hear enough about you. You know, we know what your causes are. We know what you do. But what's the backstory? And I immediately, I'm like, I'm not writing my book. No, thank you. Because in my jobs, it was always taught this, you know, just do, you know, not to be, not to be seen, heard, just do your job diligently. And then I had a, a long prayer and a long thought. And I said, you know what? Um, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it my way. I'm not going to tell people what they wanted to hear. I'm going to tell people what they needed to hear. Right. And sometimes what you need to hear is, is kind of harsh and sometimes it's uncomfortable. But, but what it is is being transparent and it's opening up a lot of different ways and pathways. So it was therapy for me as well as I'm not going to lie to you. It's been countless of others who come come to me from high ranking to low ranking to projects to corporate who just said we appreciate you being so open and honest and transparent about the things that happened in your life. And especially most importantly, kids. I, I have so many kids that have come to me about that. Yeah. No, that's awesome. It's it's hard to be vulnerable um, just in general, but then to put it in a book and sell it. <laughs> so that's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and I can see how it can be super therapeutic. Uh, but before we move on to the next topic, I, I want to ask, what is your cheat meal? Like what 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 do you what do you eat <laughs> whenever you because I know you everybody's on this healthy kick and uh, I like to talk about the stuff that you ain't supposed to be eating. That's a great well, I'm going to be honest with you. That's a great question. Every day is a cheat meal for me. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm in fitness. I mean, you look at me. I'm, I got 24-inch biceps. I can still run and jump and do all these things. But I'm going to be honest with you. I enjoy life. I want to taste my food. I actually, about um, about six weeks ago, I launched my uh, food prep company, uh, Child Meal Preps, Child Meals. And... I made them different. I made them because I have all these, I'm on the go all the time. I was eating all this food. It was just, I love those guys, but they were just frozen. They had no taste and it was this and that. I want to enjoy the food. So I did things and I will eat, even myself, I will eat, you know, a platter. I mean, a whole platter of shrimp. I'll eat a pizza. But the only thing about stuff like that is, is that when I do it, I know I have to work for it, right? I have yeah. to put all this stuff. I got to get my blood work checked. I got to make sure I'm not going over on some things of whatever it is, you know, simple carbohydrates, complex carbohydrates, your protein take, your intake. You know, everybody wants to count uh, their macros. Me personally, I don't count my macros. I count myself. <laughs> so I look at myself, I say,
what I need to do and how your body always speaks to you. And the people forget that. They want to go on these these kind of diets. And you got to ask yourself when you do do things like that, is it sustainable for the rest of your life? Can you do that the rest of your life? Can you be that person? Because your body evolves every time you change it. You know, it's like, okay, you're depleting me, you're overnourishing me, you're doing something. So you got to think about that. So every day is a cheat day for me. I'm not going to lie to you. Man, so I, every day feels like a cheat day to me, but I just don't work work for it. That's 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 where I got it. I got to start working <laughs> for it a little bit more. So I, I, so I got you. you. I got you. Thank, Trust me. <laughs> thank you for that uh, for that tip. Um, and obviously, you clearly work out. You know, I, even when I when I when I was doing my research on you, I felt like, man, before this interview, man, I need to do about three or four push ups before I even get on camera. <laughs> so just so I can start feeling like this uniform a little bit. Uh, but can, can you let us can you let our viewers know what your daily workout looks like? Oh, man. <clears throat> so I get up in the morning at three o'clock and uh, I meditate uh, and then I roll over. I do my push ups. I do all of them. It's not a workout. My push-ups is not a workout. The 2,202 push-ups every day except for Saturday and Sunday. My push-ups are for 22 vets commit suicide a day. I can't be out there with kids, women, with everything, bullying, especially bullying now with social bullying because media is so powerful. You know, it's the best thing in the world, but also can be so destructive to so many people, especially now with the younger generation. Um, and uh, I do that, but Honestly, my workout makes my push-ups look like peanut butter. <laughs> it's absolutely, I'm an endurance trainer. So I do what you call, I'll do high reps, but I do them with heavier weights. At the same time, I always tell people don't have a, men especially, don't have an ego complex. You always got to be cognitive of your body, not to hurt yourself, not to jerk, not to do this. Because one little simple move left, right, up and down can cause your injury that can last two months, two years or forever. Man, so I got I was going to break out my resistance bands. Uh, I got some by my desk. So I'm a, I, I get I got to start light because I I got about nine inch pythons right now. And uh <laughs> <laughs> I'd take them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but we're we going to get there. We're going to get to 24 one day. No, absolutely. Speaking of working out, for someone who's looking to get on the right path to health and fitness, so they're new to the thing, they don't really have a, a fitness routine or their diet's kind of out of whack, they don't know how to count macros or what they should be consuming per meal. What's your best advice for those beginners? Best advice for those beginners is, like I said, I say all the time is, First off, don't go looking for everything. <clears throat> if you haven't had your blood work checked, get your blood work checked. I don't care what age you are, how you are, because we have so many different things and food that we eat today, right? So it can right. affect your balance. It's, I mean, it's very crucial. It, it, you, people don't understand how much. I had a young couple came to me with a, a son, 11 and 13, and they have high cholesterol, like way high cholesterol. They're like, how does my kid have high cholesterol? You know, so and that was me telling them, get your blood work checked. And that's how they found out. Right. Unbeknownst to kids, the kids don't know. They don't know. They just eat and eat, eat and eat. Yeah. But I tell people, be knowledgeable for it. Right. Listen to your body. Start off slow. Right. If you want to know something, everything you have is right at your computer tip. Right. Or you get a personal training that's knowledgeable. A lot of things about me is I'm very transparent. So I don't give you things for longevity to make monetary gain. I give you things all at one time so you can understand your body and what you're doing and your end results and your end goals. You know, everybody says, I want to work on my midsection. And I said, no, we work on your whole body section. <laughs> I don't want to hear the midsection. <laughs> the midsection is not a muscle. Your body is the muscle. <laughs> so whether you like it or not, I am working on your whole body. But most importantly, I'm working on this first as well, right? And mental mentality, mental wellness is a whole foundation. Not only for physical fitness, but for your families, your lifestyle, and everything that goes along with it. Speaking of the devil, not devil, but speaking of, May <laughs> is Mental Health Awareness Month. So oh, yeah. everybody remember that. It's self-care is a real big thing. Self-care is also caring for other people as well. So, But with the fitness thing, I 100% I love. I give all my advice. People DM me, message me, ask me tips all the time. I say start slow. No egos. It's just knowledgeable anything you need to know find about your body your body talks to you all the time so just listen don't listen to him or her listen to your body first that's really good advice and i think for me personally my moment when i realized i needed to uh 
check my nutrition in my mind was when I went to a drive through in the intercom, they, they greeted me by my name. <laughs> so I was oh, like, yeah. oh, no. <laughs> I come here too often. They're like, hey, Emily, do you want the same? And I was like, oh, no. So, yes. So it's funny when you have those aha moments when you're like, oh, yeah, this is not cool. <laughs> but um, you, uh, Chef, you have the military community watching from all over the world. Do you have any words you'd like to share with all our heroes? So um, I would um, thank you guys for all your service, everything you do. We're all equal, regardless of what your job is, your profile is. We're your, your inspiration to me. I appreciate you, your biggest worth. And I, I tell people all the time is, like I just said to you guys, every day is the first day. Be grateful, be humble, humility, give back, have a legacy that can go on past you, your kids, and and forever, you know. But I, I just want to say thank you for your service, all you do every day, men and women. I, I'm here because of you. No, oh, that's so touching. And there's a lot of Chef Rush fans out there. You're getting a lot of love on our live feed in the comments. Um, I write Writing Academy LLC wants to know what's your favorite dish to cook. Any dish I cook is my favorite dish because I cook. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, no. <laughs> no, seriously, I love all food. I'm very, I'm kind of like all over the place. I mean, from fusion to Asian to uh, Latino to, I just love food because they all bring a different aesthetics to it, a different flavor profile, a different depthness. Uh, palate pleasers, it all depends on what I'm in for today. Uh, but me personally, I, I want to master every food, in every category and make it stand out. So. No, that's exciting. Um, Lori also wants to know, what will your favorite recipe be when you do actually publish your cookbook? Uh, so I'm doing a cookbook right now, and you're going to have to get the book to find it out. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but, but I will, uh, what I will tell you that my food comes with a story. There's a reason why. For instance, you know, I was at 9-11 when the plane hit. Uh, I'll tell you, I'll make something and tell you why I made it. It's the first meal I made. So all my food has a background. I don't just make food to make food. I make food, whether it be for a person, a country, or organization. It has to have a meaning behind it and some substance to go along with the taste profile. Okay. I do have one question I want to sneak in because a <laughs> lot of people, they like to tease me about my water intake. So I just want to know how much water do you drink daily? How much are you drinking? Oh, she drinks. Um, listen, she drinks a tub of water. She oh my! She has a whole jug. She, she, she has she a whole barely, jug. She can barely do the yeah. interview because she got to go use the bathroom. <laughs> are you doing what? A gallon of water? You doing a gallon of water? No, it's not even a gallon. I want to say it's just like you know, two liters maybe. It's like so it would be like two of these. Because right now I'm drinking a Sencha, so it would just be two of these. Oh. So two oh, liters. That's it? No, no, no. She showed the, the tub. Where's no, the tub that you normally have? Okay. No, no, no. So, you know how they say you can never go wrong with water? I mean, it, it's true yeah. in that part of it. Because you'd rather be doing the opposite. A lot of people do the opposite of it. I love to drink water. Water is just that natural, you know, just cleanser regardless. Right? But I also put a little lemon inside of it. Remember, you got to get that acidity for it because it actually does burn fat. Right? So, you want to mm -hmm. get those extra benefits that go along with it. I, I'll drink a gallon of water a day. That's not a problem. That's easy for me, right? Especially if you go into a, a gym. If you're an endurance trainer, it comes to the point where you work out so hard that water is just delicious. <laughs> and you can drink half of it at one time and then like, oh, man, I already finished half my intake for the day and it's only been two hours. So, um, yeah, water is always a great thing. Okay. Well, I got a couple more comments uh, that are on my page right now. I got... Uh, uh, retired Sergeant Major Jimmy Armstrong, he always harasses me about being in the Air Force. He says, go Army. Uh, and then I have uh, Jan Jan Janet Coleman Saunders. She says, Chef, I really enjoyed the story about the ice carving. In fact, I enjoyed your entire book. I do not highly recommend many books, especially autobiographies, but I highly recommend others to read your book. When reading, you can feel your heart and your truth. And thank you for sharing your story. No, no, thank, thank you for that. I was, um, I, I've heard it a few times and I did my audio book myself and uh, that was hard. 
you know, that was uh, five days, seven hours each in a little bit of container about wrapped up, hearing my stomach growl and heartbeat and having to start over. Uh, and it was emotional because it was me. And I, as it's my story and I'm going through it, uh, it brought out a lot in me. A lot of things that I forgot, I, some things I suppressed and some things your mind just makes you lock and hide away because it may have been traumatic or it may have been yeah. something that affected you or a trigger, you know? And um, when they actually came out, I was proud about being able to be transparent as this big guy, you know, 280 pounds, you know, doing all these things and being an extreme introvert, being able to speak everywhere for everybody uh, to say we're all the same and it's okay not to be okay, but not okay not to get some type of support. That's, that's well put. And uh, just for the record, uh, it, anywhere you go is a small container. So you, you could, the hotel is a small <laughs> container for you. So I'm just, you just don't, <laughs> to be fair. <laughs> but you know, but you, I'm, you, I'm, uh, tell you, I said, I'm gonna tell you, so I can't wait till we get together to work out. <laughs> oh, oh, <this> shit. <laughs> oh my goodness, hold on. Yes, you, this, you, gotta, you gotta give me about right. two years. You got to give no, me my no, two years was, to prepare no, for you. That was part of this interview. That was part of, you didn't get that? That was part of the memory. Oh, no, they didn't tell me that. No. <laughs> okay, okay. So uh, you, you briefly touched on that um, you were in the Pentagon when it was struck on 9-11. And uh, that had a huge effect on you uh, personally. You kind of mentioned uh, your cookbook, you know, has meaning behind it. You talked about it. Uh, so since you've been become an outspoken advocate for the military and especially the wounded warriors, can you talk a little bit about those efforts and how they the impact they've had? Oh wow, um, you know, you know how they say, uh, you know, I, I tell people they talk about how can you do two thousand two hundred twenty two push ups, and I say, usually the first one is the hardest. You know, it starts with one. You know, they say one person is not going to make a difference. You know, you hear that thing all the time. And when I started doing what I was doing and advocating, people came to me, organizations saying, uh, Chef, you need to do this and that. You know, you need to stop preaching about this and you need to think about money and blah, 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 and so forth and so on. And I was like, no, I'm going to keep doing what I'm doing, right? They were like, well, you're not, it's not going to work. I mean, literally, it was like, it's not going to work. You're not going to get anything from it. You're not going to, I said, well, if I have one person, I'm okay. If I help 10 or 100, you know, maybe they can go off and help another 10 or a million or whatever. And from that part of it, uh, people want to have a good vibe and good feelings about things. So when I started doing what I'm doing and being very open and very organic about it, you know, you got people from the Charles Swabs. I just did Wells Fargo. I just did PenFed and MGM. I did the FBI. I do doctors and lawyers and military, Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine, Coast Guard. You know, I write a book where I put it out more. I do videos where I do have other influencers come in and do comedy, but in a way where people can relate to the mental wellness and help for it. And, you know, that's what it's all about. Not only just the military forces, but all forces, and especially for the kids and, and the spouses, because we're trained for it. And they're not, it's affecting them a thousand times more. If I come home and I'm hurting and I'm sick, what is happening to the kids or the the, the spouses, which I, I say spouses, a lot of males, but I'm thinking mostly of females, you know, they have that secondary, that secondary, like secondary smoke, you know, they have that secondary trauma and they can feel it as much as we can. So there's multiple messages mixed up in one. And I did that on purpose because mental health and the suicide awareness, that's a foundation. But the end result is us, us together, humility, family, putting it together, working together, and being just grateful. And thinking about, hey, guess what? I woke up this morning, that's the biggest thing in the world that could possibly happen to you every day. So that's why every day is your first day. Mm. I love that. And um, we understand that you founded 2222 Inc., a nonprofit foundation to bridge the gap between civilian kids and children of active duty and or veterans. Could you share a bit more about that? So um, kids are my heart. I mean, I've always loved kids. I go in, I started with Arnold Schwarzenegger with the after school all-star kids, been an ambassador, <clears throat> going to Fifth Ward in DC, going to LA, going to Ohio and talking to these kids that are 
you know, a little deprived of what they need as a kid. Kids need to be kids when they're growing up. But also, like I was in Mississippi, and if you were, like I said, it was black and white, where you have so many different colors and so many different lifestyles growing up in the projects. And when I see my, my cousin who had this big house, it was a difference for me. And I didn't understand why and what, you know, and maybe in a mossy, like, well, you think you're better or you think you're worse or look at you, you're not as good as I am. So that's that bridging the gap, you know, and people say military families and military kids, they're different than regular kids. They grow up in a controlled environment, right? They're behind a gate or however that community is and whatnot. And you also have it. So the part about it is still helping kids be kids and understanding life, also giving that security to laugh and play and grow, even from that financial integrity development part of it, which is a huge thing right now. Right. So kids need to also be able to do all those things, have fun. And I bring in military guys. I bring in first responders and let them be big brothers, big sisters, however they want to do it. Scholarships and just give kids the things that they didn't think they could have, because a lot of the guys that are mentoring them were the underdogs. Right. But now they're the heroes and the kids should be the heroes. That's incredible. <laughs> Now, Chef, so what I'm going to do when I log off, I'm going to call my PCP and get my blood work done because that is probably the best gym that you drop all episode. Oh, yeah. And I haven't done that. My mom is watching. She's been telling me to do this, but I felt like I'm 27. Uh, I don't need to do that. But yeah, going to do it. <laughs> but before we say goodbye, um, can you remind our viewers where they can go to follow you online and learn about what's ahead for you? Uh, you can follow me. Um... Instagram is Real Chef Rush. YouTube is Real Chef. I mean, I'm sorry, Chef Rush. Uh, is there his Facebook, <laughs> uh, Chef Rush? Um, and if you DM me, message me, I actually answer all of my DMs and messages myself because somebody may need that support a little bit more so. So I do better myself and not my team. So, um, I, but I appreciate all the support, all the love. Uh, my military families, <laughs> red, white, and blue. Thank you. That's good to know, Chef, because um, I'm actually in charge of cooking pork chops later tonight, so I'll probably send you a DM over Instagram. <laughs> I'll be waiting <laughs> for those pork chops, help. too. <laughs> yeah, yeah, if we could just jump on a call. Thanks. <laughs> so, and also, for our Chief Chat viewers, this episode will be available on YouTube and Spotify. You can rewatch with your friends or catch up with past episodes. Also, be sure to join us on May 26th as we welcome CBS News on the road correspondent Steve Hartman. And also on 31 May at 1100 Central Standard Time, we have actor Aspen Kennedy joining the show. So Chef, oh my goodness. I got so much to, to kind of say to wrap this whole interview up, but uh, thank you so much for what you're doing because you 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 served 23 years and in my mind, so I'm, I'm on your 25 of my career, right? And so I'm like, okay, man, I've been, I've been working real hard. And so 25 years retired or 27 is probably my retirement. Uh, and then I'm like, okay, now I need to kind of relax and exhale and breathe. And then now talking to you, you doing everything. You working harder than you were on active duty. Like literally. Yeah. <laughs> and so I, now I feel like, man, I, I can't take the foot off the gas. Like I got to, I got to keep going because like I said, you, you are, you are very, you are very much an inspiration uh, to, to, to a lot of people, uh, your passion for the kids, you know, you, you got, you're writing a book, you're writing a cookbook, you, you, you on the road, you're doing stuff with Kevin Hart and Denzel Washington, all, all the celebrities and, and literally you on a plane 23 days out of a month. Like that, I'm just, it's overwhelming just even thinking about it and talking about it. But the fact that you, you've, uh, you serve your country and, uh, you, you capitalize on those opportunities that you had while you're in the military and now you're giving back to the community that that are, are giving back to everybody because i don't think I, you you left out a category of a person that you're trying to help uh you know as you transition from the military so i just want to say thank you so much uh for, for what you're doing for this this country this world you, you're making the world a, definitely a better place uh it's it, it's you know you you look at somebody and, and you judge a book by its cover sometimes you're like man that's a big swole dude and and normally you know Big swole dudes come off with some type of cocky, arrogant type of, uh, you know, just just a stereotype that's that's uh that that people get when they see people that kind of invest that much into themselves. But man, you you're investing yourself and also investing in everybody else. So I, I just want to thank you so much. 
Thank you so much. That means everything to me. And just for the big cocky dude, I can still break your neck easily. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm the nicest guy in the world. <laughs> I'm just joking. Well, listen, he'll break your neck and then he'll take you to the hospital. That's that's how nice he is. That's and like and this, this soup later. Yeah, and, and, and he'll and cook make for you a you. nice meal. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he'll make you a nice meal. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So you're so if you don't mind uh, hanging on till after the live is over with, so we can kind of say our formal goodbyes. But I just want to kind of tell you in front of the world, uh, thank you so much for what you do. Uh, you know, you spending the past 40 minutes with us means so much to our, our, our nation's heroes and their families and, and all the supporters of the military community. So thank you so much. And we wish you all the best in, in everything that you do. And the same to you guys. Thank you guys so much for letting me spend this time with you guys. Absolutely. All right. Chief Chat out. <laughs>